Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, and welcome to this week's Developer Skill Sprint, GPU Computing with OpenCL. I'm David I, Marketo Chief Evangelist. It's great to have you here. Let's get started. This Skill Sprint works with Object Pascal and C++, providing you have the right libraries for doing GPU computing with OpenCL. And you can build your applications on Windows and OS X at the same time, there may be libraries for Android and iOS from third-party providers, so you should check those out, and I have the resources at the end. We've got blog notes with all the links as well to help you at embt.co slash sprint hyphen OpenCL. We're going to cover a little bit of OpenCL and talk about what you can do and what libraries you might need. And then I'm going to focus on two of our technology partners who have OpenCL solutions that work with Delphi and C++ Builder. We'll do some demonstrations. I'll show you the links, which are also on the blog, and then we'll take your questions at the end. First, OpenCL is an open standard for high-performance computing using GPU chips. The GPUs are not just for graphics only. They're general-purpose computing technologies. We use them with FireMonkey, but you can also use them to do computations. It's an open standard that is maintained by the Kronos Working Group, and there are a bunch of implementers who make computers, chips, and other libraries that support the OpenCL standard. What OpenCL is, it's, it's an API for parallel computing across heterogeneous GPU graphics processors. It uses a cross-platform programming language which is a subset of ISO C99 with extensions for parallel computing. It uses the IEEE 754 floating point format so that you can have consistent numerical calculations across all the different platforms and different GPUs. You pick the platform or processor, you load and compile a kernel application using the ISO C99 extended language, then you load your data into the GPU and you execute the app. There's a large OpenCL ecosystem comprised of working group members as well as implementers. And you'll see your favorite hardware and software companies that are involved in the world of OpenCL. This is a directory search on my notebook computer, which is a Dell Latitude 6420 that has an NVIDIA chip inside of it. It shows OpenCL DLLs for both 32 and 64-bit, and you'll find similar DLLs on your Windows desktop or server, depending on the chips you have, whether it's an Intel GPU, an AMD GPU, or an NVIDIA GPU. Those are the three common ones you would find on your different computers. There are also GPU chips in Macintoshes and GPU chips inside of mobile devices. And so you can look to companies like Qualcomm Sony, Samsung, and others for OpenCL support on some of those devices. There are also some great OpenCL solutions from our technology partners. In particular, Metoff Software has the Metoff Runtime, which has OpenCL header files for both Delphi and for C++. There's a free version that you can download that doesn't have the source code to the runtime library, and then you can also purchase a licensed version that includes the source code for the runtime library. And Do Research has their MTX VEC libraries for Delphi and C++ that includes their Cougar OpenCL technology. It's a multi-core math engine for science and engineering, and there's a trial version, and you can purchase licensed versions as well. And I'm going to use samples from both of those technology partners that you can use today in your Delphi and your C++ 10 Seattle applications. So let's take a look at some demonstrations. So I'm in the IDE, and this first example ships with the Metoff software, Metoff Runtime, OpenCL demo. I've got a VCL application. It could have been a FireMonkey application. It's got a list box and a memo and two buttons. Let's take a look at this first button called Build OpenCL Kernel. And what this does is it goes out and it finds all the GPUs or the specific GPU that you have on your system. And then it will display the name of the GPU. And once it finds a GPU, it will build a kernel application that's built in ISO C99 with parallel extensions. Then it puts some random data for that kernel application. And then when we click on the Run OpenCL kernel application, it will copy the memory over to the GPU. 
set the arguments for that kernel application. We'll take a look at that in a moment. And then it will go and execute the kernel application, read the results back, and then display the results in the memo. So what does this kernel application look like? What could it look like? Here's the source code. Again, it's using ISO C99. So we've got a, a test kernel, whatever the name is, it's of type kernel. It takes three floating point buffers of data. It has a multiplier and it's gonna take the result and send it back into a result buffer in the GPU where it can be read out of the GPU's memory. And here all it does is it multiplies some number times the first buffer of data producing a result buffer. There's some form create code where it iterates through and uses the MTOF OpenCL runtime to find which chip or chips are available and it puts those into a list box. So the key here is passing some values to this kernel application that you define using ISO C99. That gets compiled by calling an API in the OpenCL library and then it's ready for you to pass data to it and start it running in the GPU. So here's the application. It's found an NVIDIA chip. Let's go and build the OpenCL kernel for that NVIDIA chip, calling the API, passing that ISO C99. Once that's done, then the second button is available, which will allow us to run that application that was uploaded to the GPU and pass data to it and get the result back. And so here the results are just that calculation, passing data in and getting the result back. So we can read the buffer from the GPU memory and process it and display it back into our user interface. So that's the first simple example that ships with the MTOF runtime that shows you how easy it is to write your own GPU kernel application using the kernel language, again, that's defined by the OpenCL standard, pass the data in, do some calculations, and get the result back. Our second application uses the Do Research Scientific and Engineering Library. And it's got a simple application here that will start up and will find chips and which device it is. And then we've got some test functions. In the case of the MTX VEC library, it includes support for lots of different operators like addition, subtraction, uh, trigonometric functions, and so on as part of its kernel that it passes up into the GPU. And there's interface units that you can work with for different kinds of functions you need to process. So here's some examples in this function list. So if we go and look at the run button, it'll see if we've got a GPU. And if we have a GPU, then it'll simply uh, do call this method called do compute. So if we look at this do compute method, it's up here in our source code, and it will take uh, the two vectors and send them off to the GPU. And then it will call functions that are part of the library under the covers, whether it's an assignment, an addition, whether they're trig functions, and all of this is provided in the header file. And then if we look inside the MTX, the expression header file, we'll see all of the different operators defined for doing operations in the GPU, whether you're adding two vectors together, for example, uh, assigning vectors to each other, testing, and so on. And all of those under the covers will use the GPU implementations. So let's take a look at this example in action using C++. So after we start up the application, it, uh, it will pop up this little reminder that when it's loading for the first time, the OpenCL needs to compile the source code for the do research library. And so it, it'll take a few seconds before it, uh, it gets loaded up. Uh, I'd previously done it, so it's all okay. It says the platform list that it found in this case was the NVIDIA CUDA chip. Uh, it's in an NVS 4200M, which is my, uh, the version of the NVIDIA chip I have. Then I can choose one of these test functions. Uh, this example lets me choose different size of vectors, whether I want complex numbers or not, and so on, and what the precision I want. So we'll just run it. And it shows us, okay, we're copying CPU to CPU and then CPU to GPU. Now it's uh, got the kernel loaded, and then it does the timing of the operations that we chose. So in this example, we're just multiplying 
C times B, those two vectors, and storing the result back in C, and so on, using all the different operators and functions that are provided for us uh, in the Do Research library. The third example is also from Do Research, and it's a more complete example that ships as part of the trial to their whole entire library. Uh, this one is a, a Delphi example, and it has lots of different uh, sub-examples, including several that use OpenCL under the cover. So let's, uh, let's run this example and take a look. So we've got this tree view that we can use. For example, here's OpenCL support in the library, that same benchmark example that you saw in C++ is also available in, in Delphi. We can pass, you know, different size uh, vectors. And then it will load the, the kernel up to OpenCL to the chip and then run it. Same thing for doing sine trigonometric operations on vectors and so on. Also in the demos that come with MTXVEC, there's an efficient multi-threading demo. This is actually a demo that came from one of Do Research's customers. It's a real-world example that was given back. It's uh, a few lines of code. It's based on computation of scattering maps of nanostructures using graphical processing units, or GPUs, that was published in the Journal of Applied Crystallography. So if we look at the source code, it's got uh, setting data index for the kernel. Here comes the source code using ISO C99. And then the rest of this is just copying from vector arrays of data and use, telling the GPA to do the operations. So if we run this benchmark, it tells us uh, this might run for a while. So here the benchmark is showing two things. Just doing it with Pascal code uh, takes 54 seconds. Using one CPU core and MTXVEC, uh, 20 seconds, and so on. And there's a note up above that says for an in-depth analysis of the results, have a look at the user's guide PDF that will tell you more about this application. Here he's got it with a parallel four. And then look at the speed using an OpenCL custom kernel on the performance of the application. That's GPU computing in action. And while I didn't spend time showing you how to build OpenCL kernel applications, all the documentation is available online and there are lots of examples that you can use for those parts of your application that can take advantage of GPU computing for high speed execution. So there's three quick examples. One that shows you a very simple example using the Metoff runtime and a little kernel program written in ISO C99. The second example that does some math and trig and multiplication addition operations and the third example, which does a lot more, again, all of these samples are available as part of the Metoff runtime, as well as the Do Research trial. Uh, on the blog, I've listed links to both the OpenCL standard, to several of the hardware vendors that have additional information about their implementation for their GPUs and their computers about using OpenCL links to do research and Metoff software, so you can go and download the free version of the Metoff runtime, which has OpenCL support, and the do research trial for both Delphi and C++ Builder, which is available from their sites, and I've put additional links on the blog post. Next week's skill sprint is titled Unlocking the Windows Runtime, WinRT, and Universal Windows Platform, UWT, for Windows 10 using Brad Studio, Delphi, and C++ Builder 10 Seattle. You can see the full schedule of upcoming skill sprints as well as all the replays at embt.co slash sprints 15. Again, next Tuesday, Windows 10, WinRT, UWP, the 24th of November at the same time, 6, 11, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Between now and December 31st, registered users of any earlier version can qualify for upgrade pricing. This is a savings of up to 45% off the new user price. 
Additionally, all registered users of 10 Seattle get access to the bonus pack. The bonus pack includes the new book by Nick Hodges, More Coding in Delphi. This covered writing solid code, aspect-oriented programming, parallel programming, and many more patterns and practices. Also, the new book by Marco Cantu, The Object Pascal Handbook. This is a modern language guide that covers many new language features as well as the core runtime library. Additionally, you get the MITA Converter Basic, which does a lot of the heavy lifting to help you convert existing VCL applications to FireMonkey to take advantage of multi-device development. And also, the VCL and FireMonkey Premium Styles. These premium styles give you the styles you need to have your application really stand out and have a professional look and feel. The styles are also available for consistency between VCL and FireMonkey to give you consistent look and feel across platforms. Also as a special offer between now and December 18th, if you buy or upgrade to Professional Enterprise or Ultimate, you can additionally get Konopka Signature VCL controls for free and CodeSite Studio 5 for free. If you upgrade to Architect though, you get the Rad Studio Solution Pack for free, which includes most every component you need for your application development. All this you receive immediately without any extra steps on your part. For more information about these special offers and more, visit Embarcadero.com slash rad offer. That's it for the skill sprints. Again, the blog notes are on embt.co slash sprint hyphen opencl. All the links are there, the links to the trial downloads, the products, all of that is available. And now it's time for your questions. Well, thank you very much, David. That was really interesting. Yeah, it's great uh, to learn about some uh, interesting stuff we can do with uh, Delphi and C++. And as I mentioned, you've got lots of examples of learning the OpenCL language. Every vendor comes with a developer guide, programmer's guide. And on the blog post, I have links to a whole bunch of resources beyond even what was in the slides. Um, there's even some older libraries and header files and interface units that are out there for Delphi and C++. And I have those at the end. Uh, some of those are abandoned open source projects, like the OpenCL for Delphi. That was built for OpenCL, I think it was 1.2, but even that still works with uh, older versions. I think they stopped around maybe XE5, so you can check those out. And at the bottom of the blog, I have the slides, both in PPT format and PDF, and the source code for the two first examples, the, the Metoff Delphi example, and the do research C++ example. The bigger examples come with the trial downloads and the, and the runtime. So you can get those by the links from the, the, uh, the blog post as well. And I've put the blog link in the chat window so you can find it there as well. And I'll keep adding resources over time as I find more things. There's tons of OpenCL information out there from every manufacturer, whether it's Qualcomm, Samsung, there's from ARM, uh, general library information, and so on. Okay. Uh, now, when you're creating an OpenCL application, do you need to target specifically an ARM or uh, an NVIDIA CPU versus a, or NVIDIA GPU versus a AMD GPU, or uh, how does that work? So you can query, so in your startup code, maybe on form create, or you could go into the main source code and, you know, and before application.run, do some tests where you can see if the target machine your application is running on has a GPU. And if it doesn't have a GPU, then you put a message up to the user saying, um, there's no GPU on this system. Uh, get a GPU, and then after, if you have a GPU, then the rest, if it's a an OpenCL compatible GPU, and you get the latest drivers from the manufacturer, for example, on my work Dell notebook, it had an NVIDIA chip, the NVIDIA drivers, as I showed you, were already there, 
On my home computer, I have an AMD processor, a Radeon, I forget which version now. There, I just went to AMD and grabbed the latest drivers, and that gave me, in addition, the OpenCL DLLs for 32-bit and 64-bit. So if it's Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, or some other GPU, uh, again, querying through the interface of OpenCL, and you saw the code that did that for both Metoff software, he did that in Form Create, and also in do research, then you can see that you have a GPU. You can also do, in the case of do research, there's some special settings that allow you to limit or test. You saw test code for, is it an Intel GPU, for example. Uh, some computers, like my Macintosh, comes with an Intel GPU on the motherboard but I have an NVIDIA graphics add-in card stuck in. So you could choose one or the other uh, for some reason. Or you could say, don't use the Intel, use the NVIDIA one. So you can do that in your own logic by getting a list through an API of all the GPUs that are found on your system. So again, that when you run your application and you call the interface to OpenCL and give it whatever your kernel ISO C99 or C++ dialect um, application, there's an interface to OpenCL to quote unquote compile that for the GPU that you're on. And once that's done, then your Delphi code or C++ code just runs, sends data to the GPU, tells it to execute the kernel application, and then get the, pull the result back uh, from the GPU memory. So there's nothing, so now if you're, you do on different computers, there's nothing special in the sense that you're calling a standard interface, giving it a kernel application, the DLL has the information that compiles it for the chip that's in that computer compiled quote-unquote and then you just run the application and it works. Just make sure you have the latest OpenCL drivers or DLLs or Dialibs from your hardware manufacturer. If you want to target a machine that may not have a GPU, so make sure it runs everywhere, can, does OpenCL take care of that for you automatically or does OpenCL only work on machines that have a GPU? OpenCL requires a GPU. You saw in the third demo that I did that comes right from the Do Research uh, trial that you can download. You saw that final result where that application was written to do the same calculations in multiple ways. So the first one was just straight Pascal code. And it went and that ran for almost a minute, 52 seconds. So you could in your own code, build an application that does the same calculation in the source language, C++ or, or Pascal, and do that if there's no GPU, GPU. And then you saw from, I think it was 52 or 54 seconds in just Pascal code, um, if there was a GPU, it was less than two tenths of a second. So the dramatic difference, and you saw the other steps along the way using multi-core and the parallel programming libraries and that kind of thing. But from almost a minute to less than two tenths of a second by using GPU computing, that's pretty cool. Now it's certain types of uh, processes that really f lend themselves well to OpenGL computing, right? Yeah, if you have like vectors of data, I mean, so large or complex calculations across, you know, big data sets, then the GPU loves that kind of stuff. Just like we did originally in the Intel Pentium processors with the MMX support, uh, you use things like signal processing applications. Those just sped up um, 
by using uh, that technology. And the same with the GPU. You know, you, you get an NVIDIA Tesla card with a thousand GPU cores. It's great for gaming, but it's great for scientific computing, for GPU computing. So you can go to the NVIDIA site or just look for uh, GPU computing. Um, and you'll see all the kinds of use cases and samples. Um, it's just if you have that kind of data, if maybe you have two columns of a grid or a spreadsheet and you want to find the, and they're a million long, and you want to find the mean or average or min and max, uh, throw that off to the GPU, the data, and cr create a little kernel application. You notice it was just strings, and you could actually create a kernel application on the fly and send the strings of the kernel application into the GPU through OpenCL and then send the data and get the result. So now if you have a number of different types of uh, uh, OpenCL drivers on your machine, whether it be uh, ARM or NVIDIA or Intel, does the the library automatically figure out which driver to use for your current hardware? Two choices. One is if you have a specific hardware, like an NVIDIA or AMD chip, then all of the APIs and these tech partner libraries will query and find which it is. And then once you've selected that one, the correct DLL or DILIB will be used. And if you have a 32 or a 64-bit app, again, Windows is involved to make sure that the right DLL is being used. So if you want to make sure your, your app runs across every machine it encounters, you're going to want to have uh, a non OpenCL GPU implementation that can run on the CPU as well as the GPU OpenCL implementation. Is that correct? Correct. Or it could be your choice. You could pop up a message. Uh, you know, if for some reason your calculations are will take a long time on a regular machine, like if it would take hours, I, I, I can't think of what that might be, but large amounts of data. You might want to say, this is going to take a long time. Maybe you should run this on a machine with a GPU. But that's your own application logic. Okay. Excellent. There's very, very cool stuff here. And again, there's lots of programming, developer guides, lots of samples. Uh, the Wikipedia page has several examples of doing fast Fourier transforms and calculations and so on. Um, the, the cool thing about Meetoff software, OpenCL, is it uses interfaces galore. So you can use those from both Delphi and C++ Builder. Uh, in the case of the Duber Search, they've got a whole library that is GPU aware of math, science, statistics functions that have the right kernel uh, ISO CPP pieces under the covers. So they've pre-built all the operators for Delphi and C++, the trig functions, and, and so on. So they've gone that extra abstraction layer to give you an enormous amount of support for operations or operators. Um, but both are available. The Metoff runtime is free, and the Do Research has a trial you can download and you can play with this technology today. And the libraries from those two tech partners are compatible with 10 Seattle. So when deciding what kind of code or what kind of application makes sense to target to uh, GPU computing, what sort of criteria are you looking for? I mean, is it only heavy mathematical type applications, or can other applications take advantage of it as well? Well, I've seen it. For math, I've seen it for transformations. If you're transforming a coordinate system, maybe you have a large, you know, imagine the universe or the solar system, and you want to transform axis or point of view or something. Um, I don't think there's a limit 
other than if you see some algorithm that can be parallelized, parallelize it. Use the multi-core systems we all have. If you see, again, large amounts of vector type data, uh, GPUs are really good at doing that. And you can mix and match, I should mention this, and I think I said it in the presentation, FireMonkey for its bitmap and style operations and so on, copies the bitmaps up to the GPU and does operations using the GPU. You can also do GPU computing at the same time because the GPUs can handle lots of different uses inside of your application. So it's not one or the other. And we changed FireMonkey along the way. It used to be that everything was in CPU memory and then as needed when you were doing an animation or a transformation it would copy it up to the GPU and then bring it back and now FireMonkey just puts what it needs in the GPU so it's ready to be manipulated uh, and there's an example of a lot of floating point operations going on in the GPU as it relates to some of the FireMonkey uh, coordinate system and transformations. so it's not one or the other you can have multiple things going on in a GPU as long as you have enough GPU memory. So now one of the examples, all the examples you showed were doing mathematical operations. Is this something you can also use for graphics and are there examples showing how to do this with graphics? Well, um, both Metoff and Do Research have integrations to do graphical things, whether it's oscilloscopes or other kinds of graphics. Do research has connections to T-chart and so on if you want to display the results of, of scientific engineering calculations. Um, you could use a GPO to do floating point transformations. That might that would be a use case. A FireMonkey already uses the GPU both for storing the bitmaps it uses and for the manipulations and animations and so on transformations of those bitmaps based on styles and coordinate systems and so on. Now usually when we think of, of uh, GPUs we think of 3D, 3D graphics but is OpenCL is it a graphics library like for like OpenGL for example or is it a um, specifically focused on doing computations like you showed in your examples mathematical computations? So if you look at the letter CL think computational language computational library. That's the way I take it. Uh, there are some articles about how you can use OpenCL and OpenGL together, but they're independent of each other. OpenCL is the API for doing GPU computing. Okay, that's useful to know. Is there a, a specific version of uh, OpenCL that Mitov library targets? It should work, as I remember, with OpenCL is backwards compatible. It should work with 1, 2, and later. Uh, I was using the latest drivers from NVIDIA that also support the latest version. But you should go to the BTOF uh, runtime library to see uh, how far back it's been tested with OpenCL drivers. I think that's it for questions. If anybody else has any more questions, go ahead and put them in the question window here, and we'll get them answered for you. Uh, yeah, really interesting stuff. I love this oh, sorry. stuff beyond, off the beaten path as far as... Dell Notebook, which had the NVIDIA 4200 uh, processor, GPU processor. But I also tested on Intel and on my AMD processor here on my home computer. And things worked okay. There's an issue on my home computer with AMD. I'm not sure if I have the right 64-bit driver for Windows, even though it says it's there. So make sure you check with the GPU provider to make sure you have the right uh, device drivers for, open, for OpenCL. Uh, Intel, a lot of computers have an Intel GPU on the motherboard, like my Macintosh has that. But it also then, in my case, I have an NVIDIA uh, add-on board. And so 
I disable, there's a setting to disable the Intel GPU, and that way it found only the NVIDIA GPU. Um, there is some notes if you go to the do research uh, documentation about how you can test specifically for an Intel GPU to see if there's one there and disable it in code versus having to do it through BIOS or some other setting. Uh, so check the do research uh, documentation. It's all available as part of the trial and there's a user guide and, and you can check for all of those bits. Uh, I'll, I have some emails from them about some of those settings. The, one of the second demo that I showed, you could look at the source code and you'll see an if statement to see if it found an Intel GPU and some other GPU, uh, how to handle it. And again, I've put all of those links and notes on the blog post and I'll keep adding to it. I also put a comment saying if, if others have links to additional C++ and Delphi OpenCL info, I'll be happy to update. So you can either send me an email or post a comment to the blog and I'll try to keep that OpenCL blog post updated. Now, uh, in the video you showed the example where you were passing the code, the C++ code, to the GPU or to OpenCL via as a string. Is there a way that you can evaluate that code um, in like C++ Builder and work with it that way and then send it to OpenCL or does it have to be completely done as a string as far as our developer tools are concerned? That's how the API works. You give it this ISO C99 with extensions language and then earlier this year, I think it was at the Game Developer Conference in March, uh, the Kronos Group announced a C++ uh, subset uh, that you could use with the API for 2.1 that was proposed and presented. I don't know if there's any drivers for the C++ subset. They sort of talk about it as a C++ 14 subset language. Um, so I have to do some more investigation to see if there's any drivers from any of the manufacturers that support that. Everyone that I found supports the ISO C99 uh, with parallel extensions. And that's what's documented if you go to the documentation link I put in the blog post for the OpenCL v2.1 reference pages, which is sitting on the screen in the OpenCL information section, uh, item number three, uh, fourth bullet number three. So if you go there, it talks about the OpenCL uh, ISO C99 language and, and documentation to show what functions are available. I suppose you could put some of that source code into a text editor and see what the C++ um, you know, code highlighter might do. It may not know about underbar, underbar kernel, for example. Uh, and then again, maybe it would. Uh, but the way that you pass to the OpenCL API is you pass the program and that gets quote unquote compiled through an interface and you can see those calls both in the METOP library as well as under the covers if you have the source code for do research uh, you can see how that's done and you can look at the API to see how you pass a, a quote-unquote kernel app it's called not an operating system kernel but a GPU kernel app but we don't have any support currently in the ID for that variant uh, it's possible, and as we move forward on our Clang enhanced compilers, there's an a CUDA plugin where you could put CUDA inline code, CUDA being an API specific for NVIDIA. I'll have to check to see if the Clang community has an OpenCL uh, inline or embedded uh, support. And if and when we get to that point, then we could have syntax highlighting and inline creation 
that would then, under the cover, still have to call the API. Uh, so that's some more research. So far, we don't have that support in the Clang Enhanced compilers we shipped today. But if you go to Clang, CUDA, for example, search in Google, you'll see the possibility that might be there in the future. So there's a suggestion here that uh, maybe we do a session on Box2D as well, um, which we did have a session on Box2D, although I noticed it was a preview session, so maybe we could revisit that in the future. Um, yeah. Although Box2D is not a graphical library, that's what's important to understand. The 2D physics in here, that's not a graphics library. Uh, but I think Pavel has some really cool demos that were part of the preview, but we could have him do a skill sprint in Q1. I'll add that to the list. So Hamed's asking um, if we're going to do have support for Microsoft Surface controls or similar multi-touch. I'm not sure exactly what it is he's he's wanting there. Um, we already support multi-touch, both yeah. for FireMonkey, that was added in, what, XE7 or XE8? The, the on tap, on multi-touch, there's, at the form level, there's, if you drop a form or create a form in a FireMonkey application, go to the events page for the form, you'll see the on gesture, but you'll see on tap and on multi-touch or whatever it's called now. And that gives you an array of the touch points that you can do things. That's already in FireMonkey today, uh, as long as the Windows API or other. I've done it for iOS and Android, where I put ten fingers on the on the form, and I get all the touch points. Or maybe it was eight. I don't know if I can put ten on Android. I forget now. But that's all been in FireMonkey for the, at least the last two releases, the on multi-touch and on tap, uh, which was added to on gesture. So look in your FireMonkey form. Uh, event handlers tab in the object inspector, and you'll see those uh, event handlers. That you can hook. So Jens is saying, uh, ask us if you have any experience with the latencies regarding compiling the OpenCL code, and as far as how to choose whether it's a good idea to, what makes sense to offload to the GPU versus just do it on the CPU? Well, again, it, I think that third demo shows a uh, a very spectacular example of using the CPU, and you you can download that trial and look at that sample that uh, in the vector uh, threading demo, where just doing regular Pascal code, doing a multi-core version with parallel four, and then using the GPU, it went from I think just Pascal calculation, the CPU not optimized or anything. 54 seconds, uh, GPU less than two less than two tenths of a second. So for that application, uh, take a look and, and again, it's doc. There's a documentation that talks about that that case study that's part of that demo that came from one of the customers of Do Research. So you should take a look at that, uh, and it's it's listed right in the the sample as well as in the user documentation. Okay, great. That's a really good point there, yeah. Just, you really need to evaluate what you're trying to do and, and how the overhead gets into that. And that, that example is a good way to see that. So I think that's it for our questions. Unless we else got some else one they put in there really quick. Uh, it's been really interesting. Thank you, David, for putting this together. It's all fun. Uh, it's not mainstream. But if you're doing scientific engineering or, uh, you know, number crunching parts of your business applications, we have a customer in Australia that's using OpenCL for some big mathematic uh, simulation calculations and data analysis that they do that I'm hoping someday we might be able to, to talk with them about publicly. But I visited them a few weeks ago. And they're using OpenCL today with a bunch of the mathematics work that they're doing. I think I visited with them when I was down there last year. Those really impressive stuff they're doing. Very cool. It's always neat to see some of the really 
uh, impressive and creative things people are doing with uh, with Delphi and Ryan Studio. And C++ code. And Jens is just saying he or she had known about this before he uh, his final thesis where he had an app that calculated for hours. You know, well, OpenCL has been around for a long time. I, I started doing some OpenCL work at Delphi 7 and CBuilder 6 uh, going way back when OpenCL, I think, was either 1.0 or 1.1. Uh, and then testing it again with one two. So uh, it's been around for a while uh, as a way to get at these different GPUs that have come out um, and having a standard way to to talk to all of them. And then under the covers, there's dilibs, DLLs, SOs, and so on that uh, are actually doing the work. All right. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, David, and thanks to everyone else for joining us, and we'll look forward to seeing you all online next week as we talk about Windows 10 and uh, Windows WinRT and the Universal Windows platform. Yep, very cool. All right, thanks. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>